to The Pod Doctors. I'm Dr. Damien Dauphiné, and I'm here with my partner, Dr. Rafa Hussein. Hello, hello. And we are going to be delving into the all-encompassing and excruciatingly painful ingrown toenail. And hopefully we'll be able to, I think, uh, allay fears. I think people come into this with all kinds of really uh, horrific expectations of what this procedure is supposed to be like and how we treat these. Uh, this does not have to be a, an extra, extraordinary, extraordinarily painful process. In fact, I think we do these better than anybody, clearly. Oh, yeah. Um, we're uh, trained to anesthetize the digits, I think, in a way that is far less painful. Um, in fact, I've had multiple patients who say, that the doctor that wanted to inject their their big toe was literally going to stick the needle in from the end of the toe, which is absolutely insane and is completely unnecessary and probably the most painful way you could possibly do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I've had patients tell me that they had their their primary try to dig it out and they used cold spray only rather oh, than geez. imagine that. That's like worse than having like your father trying to dig out your toenail, you know? Uh, yeah, that just sounds brutal. So just so everybody understands, um, the way we go about this, we'll discuss, and we'll, I'll get into this a little bit further, but you know, this is an extraordinarily common problem. We see it uh, almost every day, and our surgical answer for this, I think, is really straightforward and works well and doesn't have to be painful, and I think we're really good at numbing up toes, and that's half the battle. Yeah, I think the the fear comes from patients that try doing their bathroom surgery and they know it's excruciatingly painful and they're scared it's going to get something similar here but I mean honestly it's uh, a little bit of lidocaine and then the rest of it is is numb I mean there's no pain it's aesthetically pleasing right and uh yeah I think it's better that you come here and get it done or any anywhere professional get it done and we're talking you know permanent removal of those sides not yeah. the whole toenail usually now there are times when we'll talk about that that's clearly necessary when you get a pincher nail yeah. there's no way you can fix that nail shape and the nail is so curved that you just can't do just the sides but primarily you know we like to do just the sides that are involved and we can do that in a permanent fashion using a chemical called phenol and uh, we have great success so let's talk a little bit more about this before uh, before and after here yeah so i mean what causes an ingrown toenail we're talking about very simple things you know cutting your nails in too close genetics shoe gear trauma um, i mean honestly the most common thing i'd probably say is a combination of genetics and cutting and digging out those corners mm -hmm. and when you dig out those corners i mean if you imagine it let me get a little scrap sheet of paper if you take those corners, right, this is your toenail, right? I do the same spiel with all my patients. This is your toenail. This is your skin. If you dig out those corners, it's only going to let that skin drift in more because nothing's holding it in. The nail is curved. It's going to dig in even more and more and more as it grows out. And the more you dig at it, the more uh, of a vicious cycle it becomes. Um, so very simple things that you can hopefully prevent. And we'll give you some tips and tricks on that. Yeah, I think that's that's really common. I think the genetic aspect of this, where you see this running in families, yeah. just the nail shape is there's a genetic preponderance for that nail shape, and you can't fight it. And the best way to address it would be, you know, doing this pretty simple surgery do right here in the office. Yeah, uh, for sure. I want to emphasize: do not dig out those corners. No bathroom surgery, because that's when patients come in red hot, infected. They got pus rolling out of there. And then we're kind of fighting an infection and an ingrown toenail. So do not dig out those corners, please. I think there's also the idea that, you know, you can make this better with Epsom salt soaks and then the, something called outgrow, yeah. a topical treatment or grow out, outgrow, one of those two. That's, this, this is a mechanical problem. Yeah, you know? those, those things are short-lived. If right. you have a very, very mild ingrown toenail where it kind of aches every so often... This might be a simple thing to help slow down the progression, you know, postpone the inevitable. But um, there's going to be a time where you have to at least get that um, that uh, that border, that nail corner out of there. Yeah, so that's really the mechanical aspect of it. You just you can't fight if it's if it's digging into the tissues, you're going to continue to have a problem. And and oftentimes that's the other thing that we ought to mention. We don't usually use antibiotics on these patients, even when they come in with the red, hot, swollen toe, because simply removing the, the offending nail border 
mm-hmm. um, is an, is typically enough to clear this up without antibiotics. Yeah. So it's almost like the nail is digging into the extent that the immune response is to the nail. It's to the nail digging into the skin. Yeah. So if you just eliminate that, it'll drain and you'll see the cellulitis improve or the redness and, and uh, inflammation improve tremendously. So it's very rare that we, we put people on antibiotics for this. I think we use antibiotics uh, maybe more than we need to in the United States. I think everybody comes in with you know some sort of viral uh, syndrome and they want antibiotics. I know primary care doctors deal with that a lot. Um, but even for something as simple as this, it's not usually necessary. Yeah, you have to get that that um, that violating corner out of there. Correct. Uh, here's a little tape trick that I've seen patients use. Um, oh, if you talk to an old timer, they'll tell you to cut a V in the center of there. How, how often have you heard that? <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't work. <laughs> no, it does not it work. It stabilizes the nail. It makes things, I think, somewhat worse. And so back back to your your tape. Pulling of the ingrown nail borders. I have never seen this technique. I've had a couple of patients. You know, I, I've seen this maybe a handful of times, but it, I've only seen them in patients that are like runners or athletes. I don't know where they get the, the trick from, maybe from like their therapist or something. Or, or maybe off of uh, Runner's World magazine. Yeah. <laughs> that wouldn't yeah. surprise me. I, I mean, I don't know how much it would really work. I mean, because you're not fixing the nail problem. You're pulling the skin and hoping that the nail comes out the corner, but... Um, as far as getting the offending border out, yeah, it's probably not going to work. Right, I would agree. Yeah, I think these other these are this is great. You've got the picture of the little wire. The, the, this idea is that you're gluing a wire that is going to deform and pull the nail edges up and out. Um, I, I've yet to see that work. Uh, I've I've seen patients that have been able to purchase this on the internet and just haven't seen it work. And this other plastic gutter splint thing is another uh, no-go. Yeah. Uh, another thing that I just think uh, causes the potential for seeding bacteria further in the, under the nail. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. The cotton trick, I mean, that's one of those old-school tricks. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't think it's worth even trying to push something under your nail. I mean, think it's about it. It's got to be excruciating. Yeah, you're having so much pain down there, and then all of a sudden you're like, hey, let me just stuff something more deeper <laughs> into my, my toe, under my toenail. It's like one of that bamboo splinter torture when they used yeah. to do back in... I mean, if you lived on an island in the middle of the Pacific and you had no way of coming to see a podiatric surgeon to address this, that's probably your go-to. Yeah. Um, Dr. There's... Scholl even came up with something. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I've never tried them myself, so I couldn't say yay or nay. I don't understand uh, how they would get it on there to begin with, how you would straighten your nail. Um, I've seen this spring thing at like nail salons. Um, where they'll try to, you know, straighten the nail out. Uh, I've seen some torture devices. I, I've seen some weird things. Um, but I've never seen this Dr. Scholl thing. So I couldn't say yay or nay, but uh, again, I would... I think unlikely... Yeah, I'd be I, hesitant. Yeah, because, you, you, again, most of these people, uh, for, most of the folks that come in, the nail is relatively short. And if you're shoving something underneath that nail edge, that that's just got to be excruciating. Yeah. Now here's one, just like that spring device where it's like plastic... Um, like I said, nail salons will typically try this. In the pictures, you can see the before and after. We don't do that stuff here. Um, maybe at our nail salon. I don't know if the nail salon does that. No, we don't. No, uh, no. I don't think so. But um, maybe, I don't know. Uh, who's to judge? In the picture, it showed it worked, but I've never had a patient tell me it's worked. So, um, I don't know. Toss the, up on that. Your, your next picture here of a before one month and, and at the end, if that was literally possible... I think I would use them uh, not infrequently, but I, I've not I've not been able to to see that kind of a result. I think that's yeah. extraordinarily rare. Here's a, a torture device. Uh, if you look at the next slide, the uh, uh, the clamp type system. Now this has become super popular on the internet. Um, our nail salon is playing with this right now, so maybe we'll see some results as far as that goes. But what they typically do is they'll, they'll clamp that little device on there. Oh my gosh! Yeah, they'll crank away at it, right? For how, and they leave that on there for how long? They leave that on there for like I don't know a short while, where they soak their foot in like hot water and Epsom salts, and then they gel over the top of it, which will supposedly hold the structure. Now uh, the nail technicians they on, online they claim it works. Um, I've never had a, a podiatrist or anyone tell me that's worked, or, or I've never even, you know, heard of anyone using something like this. But hey, the internet, you know, uh, who knows if it works or not? We'll, we'll let you know what happens. <laughs> that's that's really wild. That's almost like an external fixator for your nail. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. 
So here's what we typically do. As far as ingrown toenails go, we gotta get that corner, that border, out of that skin. Because there's something that's pushing against that skin. Your, your skin is like that rock in a hard place situation. Rock being the ground, the hard place being that nail. So what we do, we'll numb up that toe, a full circular block. And again, let's let's reiterate that, that we're blocking the toe back at the base. Yeah, we're not doing it where it's hot, red hot right. infected. You can do two, two basically two needle sticks and end up numbing up all four corners to get all four uh, nerves and cause complete anesthesia of the entire digit. Yeah. And do that without going through the, the end of the toe, which is just insane. Yeah. So, because I, th- I really think that's a huge barrier to entry for folks that know they need this done but have heard such horror stories about uh, the the injections. They're not that bad. We use a freeze spray. We use ethyl chloride. It yeah. numbs up the skin. Super cold. I tell easy. my patients, real cold and a quick poke. I mean, honestly, yeah. the, the cold spray ends up being the worst part. I mean, because their feet get super duper cold. And uh, after that, it's super, it's super duper numb. I mean, there's no yeah. reason they should feel any pain. And most patients... Uh, say they was they were thinking it was going to be far worse. Yeah, the anxiety of what they were about to experience was way worse than what they experienced. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll numb it up. We'll free up that border. We'll clip out that corner that's dug into the side of that skin, and we'll use a little chemical. And in, in, in our office, we use phenol. Most offices use sure. phenol, but I mean you can use like a uh, so you can silver use, nitrate. You can use you, the, you can so, uh, Sodium hydroxide. Sodium, that's what I meant. Yeah. Sodium hydroxide. You right. can use the, uh, the the lasers, the cautery pens. Um, it's just but, a, f- a fancier way of doing the same thing. Yeah. I, I would estimate that 90 plus percent you probably use phenol. Phenol procedures have been around for, I would estimate, 70 years. Yeah. I mean, they were around long before I started practice 21 years ago. So I, it's a procedure that is 95% effective. Well, I think it's less than 5% recurrence rate. Now. Oh, yeah. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's 3 to 5, uh, yep. depending on the literature. Um, so very simple. Um, we'll use a little S mark to make sure that your toe doesn't bleed, and um, you'll have a small little bandage on top of it. Now it is a chemical burn, so we do use a little bit of a wound gel afterwards, and that's just our you know forte. Um, but it doesn't mean that you can't use antibiotic ointment, you can't use iodine, you can't use any type of antimicrobial. Uh, but since phenol is a chemical burn, we like to use a, a little a wound gel on the. Uh, uh, the healing corner. Mm-hmm. And um, this is a great series of pictures you've got here showing the tourniquet, uh, showing the goal, which is to remove you know enough nail that you come back to the flat portion of the nail, and then how that fills in over time. And it takes about three or four weeks to, for that to fill in. This is one of the nicest things you can do for somebody. Yeah. They come in in pain. They're scared. They're worried about it. They've been dealing with it for weeks, sometimes months. Uh, and it's such an easy fix. We don't typically ask people to come back and do it on a different day. We try to address it on the day they come in, and um, and that that usually um, allows us to be able to take care of this before it gets out of hand. But when you wait too long, you are changing the pH in the soft tissues, which can mean that the the local anesthetic doesn't takes work longer. as well or yeah. takes longer. So um, yeah, keep that in mind that it's much easier for us to numb you up and keep you comfortable if you come in before it gets, you know, red, hot, swollen, inflamed, draining, pus kind of thing. Yeah, and, and if you're looking at these pictures, I know that it seems like they're showing like they were taking out a huge chunk. But honestly, when it comes down to it, if you see them clinically, and I'll, I'll try to get some pictures going for that, but um, they look like you've never done anything. They're right yeah, up once, against the nail fold. Once the skin retracts back, you can't even tell it was done. Yeah. Um, now, there are other cases where the skin fold has been so damaged that we have to do a little skin wedge resection. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe, I don't know. Maybe 10% of the time. Yeah. That's probably say, not even that. Yeah, you know, 1 in 20. And maybe. some of those we'll take to the operating room. Yeah. Because we want to control bleeding a little bit better. Maybe there are more, uh, there are more signs of infection. Um, some folks are so petrified of needles that we have to take them to the operating room and do yeah. these. And we will from time to time. Certainly, more expensive way to do it because you've got coinsurance and copay with the surgery yeah. center or the hospital. But if you need to be under IV sedation for this to happen, uh, that's what we'll do because we don't want to torture you here in the office. But I would say ninety-five percent of the time, and ninety percent of the time to ninety-five percent of the time, we're doing them here in the office. Yeah, I think the last person I had to take the OR was an autistic kid. I mean, yeah. he just wouldn't sit still. His his mom and dad knew. And there, and they there didn't are times to... when you've got ten of them to do. I mean, yeah. Someone who comes in with just pincher nails across the board, 
that's not someone you want to do you know, local anesthetic injections for each toe yeah. in the office. That's That would be cruel. So putting them to sleep first is the right way to go. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, like Dr. D was saying, the, the pincer nails, those are the ones that are super duper curved and, and we're trying to get uh, the nail back to normal. Say patient's gone through this, patient just doesn't even want to try doing the partial. That's when we talk about doing total nail avulsions. Mm-hmm. We're literally taking the whole nail off and using the, the cautery agent to make sure it never comes back there again, you'll have some nubs. You won't, I mean, honestly, 99% of the time, you won't be able to tell anything was ever done unless you're really looking closely at their toes. Um, but I've had patients walk in here with uh, their toenails removed, and it took me a second to realize they were gone. I mean, they're sitting, right. I'm looking at their feet, and it took me a moment to realize. They grow a layer of skin over that area, and it's not cosmetically unappealing. Certainly no more so than, you know, big, nasty fungal nail. I yeah. Mean, it's far less cosmetically unappealing. So this next series is showing the wedge resection procedure, which really does work great. Uh, I, I, I would typically incorporate this into taking a section of nail at the same time. Like, I don't know if I've ever done it with just doing the wedge resection of skin. Oh, I do both at the yeah, same time. Yeah, I was going to say that. I would, do, I would clearly do both. I think taking just skin is probably uh, asking too much. So, so it, it, am- amputation's not really a real option here, is it, Doctor? <laughs> saying no, amputation's not a real. Option. That's just a joke. I mean, I've had patients request that they just remove the toe. They, they were that bad <laughs> off, and they're like, "Just take the dang thing off." But no, we, that's not necessary. <laughs> so, I mean, let's talk about prevention. Um, when we're talking prevention, we're talking about um, things you can do to make sure that that ingrown toenail um, one doesn't get to the point that they have to be removed, or two, um, after we do the procedure, doesn't come back again for those three to five percent. Um, simple things like not cutting the, the nails improperly, you know, cutting them straight across. Don't get fancy and try to dig the corners out. Some people cut them especially short, short so uh, the tuft of the skin will work around the edge of the borders. Um, tight shoes, uh, or if they go to nail salons, very commonly uh, these nail salons will dig out the corners because they know that some patients like that, it gives them a little bit of relief. But then obviously, if you keep on digging out the corners, you're back in that vicious cycle of getting an ingrown toenail. Um, here's a picture, real straightforward picture, nice square cuts. Um, I mean, I'm sure you tell patients that all yeah, the time. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and avoiding that angled cut, trying to V these out or angle that cut at all is just going to allow the skin to lap up over the corner and then your nail's literally digging a, a ridge right through the skin as yeah. it grows out and that's just not going to work. I actually had a patient that had <clears throat> the tip of his nail buried under his skin and coming out the tip of yeah. his toe. Oh, I've seen it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It looks excruciating. The other thing that you need to keep in mind, this picture in the bottom left hand showing the tight shoe or, or even just a bunion deformity in general, a lot of times the... Um, the, the issue can be exacerbated by those two toes that are just on top of each other. And so when people wonder why why is it this inside, not you know not the medial, but we call this the lateral border. The one next to your second toe. Right. Why is the lateral border always the problem? Well, when you have two toes that are literally riding each other, that's shoving the tissue up into the nail plate. Yeah. And that's a constant source. And so there are patients where we've done multiple resections of that side and it doesn't work because of the mechanical deformity of the bunion so there are times when you have to say to the patient hey look we either need to remove your entire nail or we need to fix your bunion deformity yeah which sounds extreme but it's clearly causing soft tissue issues yeah so that's not a uh it's not an unreasonable thing to consider is fix the bunion deformity so that you don't have the overlap which is causing your nail deformity in the first place yeah um so let's talk about nail softening agents. I mean, a uh, very simple thing you can do uh, to hopefully prevent this from ever happening. Now, these aren't obviously um, curing the ingrown toenail. If you have a border that's digging into your skin, it's not going to work. But if you have very, very curved nails, this might be an option to help soften that curve. It won't completely reduce it. Very rarely does that ever happen. Um, but you can use things like home remedy stuff. Like if you ask grandma, just say put Vicks Vapor Rub on it. The one caution about Vicks Vapor Rub is it it can actually cause onycholysis. Yes. So you're, it can cause the nail to literally fall off. It is not a treatment for fungal nails. 
it is really not a treatment for anything except it can soften the nail. It's the petroleum jelly and the uh, the menthol. Right. And and it can cause your nails, if they're very friable or kind of uh, chalky and scaly, it can literally make the nail fall off. And that, if, if that's not your goal, you might go to something more like Caranail with the urea in it, which will just soften the nail and won't usually cause the nail to fall off. Yeah, so that's what we use in office. Anything that has urea in it. Caranail is just the specific one that we use. Mm -hmm. um, but urea is an exfoliant agent. It, it softens uh, the tissue. So Ker that's why... Yeah, it softens keratin. So whether it's callus or, or nail. Yeah, um, another popular one right now is tea tree oil. Because tea tree oil is antifungal, antimicrobial to some extent. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's an oil, so it saturates that nail, softening that nail. And it might be something to, to look into. I mean, um, The Gay Wall Med Nail Softener is not one I'm familiar with. You know what the active ingredient is in that? I have no idea. I just Googled the, the nail softening agents, and that was like a very popular one. So I threw it on there. But um, we'll, look like, in, we'll look into that and get back to you. Yeah. Um, I mean, most important thing here, uh, take-home message is, uh, don't dig out those corners. Once you start feeling an ingrown coming on, try you know you know your simple things, your conservative options. See what's causing it. Maybe it's shoe gear. Maybe it's the way you cut those toenails. Um, don't let any family members do bath bathroom surgery on there. And then uh, when it comes down to it, um, come see your favorite doctor. You there know? you go. Come see George Clooney. <laughs> um, that was fantastic. I think again we want to fall back on the idea that that this is a treatable problem, that you don't have to be uh, afraid of the treatment, that we are extremely concerned about keeping you comfortable during the procedure. We don't skimp on anesthesia. We are going to anesthetize the digit or digits in, in a, as, as gentle a way as possible. And most people walk out of here uh, wondering why they waited so long to get it done. Yeah. And that thankfully, it is, it's a very common thing that we do, but it, it's one of the most rewarding things we do because it's almost instant yeah. relief for something that has probably plagued the patient for weeks and sometimes months, months yeah. sometimes years. And they've been, have been avoiding it and getting these uh, infections at one after another. And there is the risk, if you're a diabetic patient, that these infections could get into bone and cause you to lose your toe. Oh, yeah. That's not unusual, and that is a really silly way to lose a, dig a digit. Yeah. So if you're diabetic, don't let these go. Let Any us, type of us, neuropathy. Absolutely. Any type of, of sensory loss in your feet, whether it's from diabetes or some other some other source, if you're having nail issues, you need to get them addressed. And, and this is a way for us to do it permanently. Yeah. Or if you have any vascular problems. If absolutely. You, blood if you have flow issues, blood flow, oh, smoker, yeah. you know, you don't want to mess around with this stuff. You can't bring antibiotics to an area without blood flow. It's much harder to treat infections when you don't have enough blood flow and, and healing soft tissue injuries is much more difficult when you don't have blood flow. So again, that, we're going to work all that stuff up when you come see us. We're going to make sure you have appropriate blood flow before we can do the procedure. But yeah, avoiding that bathroom surgery is an uh, important safety tip. Well, that was Ingrown Toenails. Yes. Thanks for tuning in. Um, follow us, The Pod Doctors. If you have any questions, concerns, by all means, shoot us a message, leave your reviews, likes, follow, thumbs up. Yeah, and, people and, do. and get back to us with content. If you want some additional information on something we may have mentioned or maybe we glossed over something that is important to you, let us know. Please uh, go to thepoddoctors.com and you can use that as a jumping off point for leaving us a, a message. Um, but we are, are hopefully going to be able to provide weekly content for you. This is a quick one that will probably air maybe several times because I think it's a really important uh, very simple thing that we do in the office. Very common. Yep. So thanks, everybody, and we will see you next time on The Pod Doctors. Good night. We are The, the Pod, Pod Doctors. Doctors.